Hey! Hey, guys. Uh, how's everyone feeling? Are we, fi are we still fired up? Uh, I know what you're thinking. Why is this guy from Will Ferrell's comedy company on stage? This is not what I signed up for. Um, how many people in the room know what Funny or Die is? Oh, OK. So you're the cool public health professionals. Because <laughs> most of the time, no one raises their hands. Um, they think it's like a real thing, like funny or die. And it gets very real. <laughs> it's, it's not good. Um, so my name is Brad Jenkins. And I'm going to say some stuff about comedy. And it's going to be very earnest. Uh, I know that comedy can't solve all of our problems, but I like to exist in a world where it can. So excuse my optimism uh, and excuse my fired upness. Um, before I start, I want you guys to think about the last time that you were with maybe your mom or your family members and you were laughing so hard that your stomach hurt. Do you know that feeling? Where like, you're like, no, please stop. I can't even breathe. Is that not the greatest feeling in the world? There's no better feeling than that feeling, but yet you think you're going to die because um, it's so funny. Uh, that's my job. That is my job. My job is to make you laugh so hard that you pee your pants. Um, and with that peeing of the pants, we also try um, to do some social good. Because we feel like you are never more yourself than when you are laughing. And if you are yourself and you feel like you're yourself, you can share information and share passion um, and share facts and figures and all the things that we care about with your loved ones. So for those of you who don't know what Funny or Die is, those uncool healthcare professionals, uh, we put together a short video of Funny or Die. Hi, I'm Will Farrell. We here at Funny or Die are always looking for new ways to entertain you, our loyal viewers. Shut your mouth! Okay! You did it again, Blake. You know, Jake, parkour isn't for everyone. You got another thing coming. One, two, three, four, go! <laughs> Get up. Get up. Get up. Quarterback, you moron! I'm Lisa Carroll's Taylor Jacobs. Tyler Jacobs. Can I start over? I ran a third time. It'd be sort of like doing a third Hangover movie. It didn't really work out very well, did it? Starting to get the picture. Let's grab one of cancer's testicles and pop it. It's time to a better love, let the wings spread. It'll always come back, baby. The answer may surprise you. Come back flat, black paint. When I heard that, like, people actually watched this show, I was, I was actually pretty surprised. So I figure if we're going to run our businesses like it's the 1960s, I'm going to act like it. We have registered 750,000 Californians. Please welcome, for the first time on Billy on the Street, the First Lady of the United States of America, Michelle Obama! How are you, Mrs. Obama? I'm great, Billy. This has been a lot of fun, Mrs. Clinton. We should stay in touch. What's the best way to reach you? Email? You got mail. French fries are practically salads, which is why I like mine with ranch. Now, let's all work together to make it that way! Yeah. Yeah.
So that is Funny or Die. Round of applause to the great editors. Um, OK, so a little bit about that video. So you saw in the beginning, Funny or Die has been doing this for 10 years, but most of our great comedy has gone to um, TV shows and short videos and corporate brands. We love corporate brands. They uh, would pay us a lot of money to reach millions of people to get them to buy Dodge Durangos and Pepsi and Under Armour. Uh, and what we realized that we were not utilizing this incredible tool in our toolbox to affect change. And that changed with this video. Um, do you guys remember that video with President Obama and Zach Galifianakis? It was kind of amazing. Um, what people don't remember is the reason why that video came about um, was there was this website called healthcare.gov. Do you guys remember that launch? Yeah, you guys are just laughing. I don't even need to say the punchline. Uh, the website didn't work. And for the healthcare professionals in the room who worked on enrollment and who worked in community health centers and who worked on Medicaid expansion, Medicaid expansion this was not funny. This was gravely serious. The website didn't work for two months. Um, millions of people that we that were counting on this website working were not able to get through. But more importantly, we had to reach a ton of young people. And Stephen Colbert and Jon Stewart were making fun of healthcare.gov every single day. And so the only way that we thought at the White House that we could reintroduce healthcare.gov to the American public was laughing at ourselves, was using humor. Um, and it worked. It was the most effective video that the White House collaborated on. Um, it was perhaps the most cost-effective video in the history of the internet, because uh, it cost zero dollars to produce. Uh, and it reached 62 million people on the internet, over 100 million people on television. And the most important thing was that it was an uptick in healthcare.gov by 40%, which is incredible. It was that surge of enrollment that led to us hitting that CBO estimate in the first year. So after that happened, we're like, wait a second. Why aren't we doing more of this? Why aren't we doing between two ferns for everyone? And so Funny or Die hired me. I was working at the White House at the time. I had to call my parents and tell them I was leaving, working at the White House for President Obama <laughs> to go work for Will Ferrell. And my mom, who's Korean, I kid you not, said, the man in his underwear? <laughs> and I said, yes, mom. But it's awesome, I promise you. And so since then, we've done 35 campaigns with some of the biggest and best public health organizations in the country. And we've done a lot of things. Um, but most importantly, we've helped them reach millions and millions of young people that they otherwise never would have been able to reach. And so, you know, look, I've got like five minutes left to tell you what I know about comedy. Um, I put it in like five very quick things, and so I'll be super quick. Um, the first thing, which we've been talking about and I've been in sessions, is you gotta define your goal even with comedy, right? Your goal still remains the same. Your target demographics, the message, the focus group, the data, all of that remains the same, it just, comes with a recognition that you are not funny, but you can hire funny people, uh, which is exactly what the White House did to reach those millions of people. Number two, you've got to meet them where they are. And a uh, reminder for anyone who doesn't know, um, if you are on television, you are wasting all of your money. If you are spending millions and millions of dollars on television and radio and all that stuff, you're wasting your money. Um, where people are is on their phones, where people are is on social media. And so, particularly for our age demographic, which are millennials, Gen Z, meeting them on social media is key. Three, uh, finding the balance. So there's four billion pieces of content posted on Facebook alone every single day. Four billion. 
how does something break through? It's entertaining. And so that's what we tell people. You can have the most beautiful, smart, brilliant, earth-shattering, changing campaign, but if you don't create a piece of content that's entertaining, no one is going to see it. No one. So find the balance of entertaining and compelling. Four, there's four billion pieces of content, so you gotta shake it up, man. I think we've been talking about change, behavioral change. Doing the status quo is not gonna work. And I can speak, and we can all wax political about the changing, bifurcated nature of our media environments and our Facebook algorithms and this person who tweets mean things from the Oval Office every day. None of that stuff matters. What matters is your issue, you need to reach people. It could be life or death between reaching them. There's one thing that America still does better than anyone else in the world. It includes uh, ice skating, apparently, since last night we crushed. <laughs> and the second thing that we know how to do is we know how to entertain, man. We know how to make beautiful, hilarious, captivating stories. Use them. Writers, producers, talent, they want to work for you. But approach them just like you would approach a creative agency. Collaborate with them, strategize them, with them just like you would treat anyone else. And then five, and this is the most important thing. Every single person in this room um, has a movie-making device in their pocket. In fact, many of you aren't even looking at me. You're just looking at your device. <laughs> you don't need millions of dollars, guys. I know there's a lot of creative, ag creative agencies here who say you do. Uh, and they're probably going to yank me off the stage. You don't. The most hyper-viral content for Gen Z and millennials are shot on iPhones. This isn't an iPhone, but it looks like one. <laughs> they're shot on iPhones. They're quick little videos. They're six seconds, 30 seconds. They're weird memes, right? You guys could probably just hire your 13-year-old son to do your social media, and it will crush. But you have to be brave. You have to be brave. Because if you're not entertaining, no one is going to see it. And the last thing, I will end on a more personal note. Um, and this is about bravery. This is my intern, White House intern. Her, man, her name is Amanda Wen. Uh, she was my intern at the White House when I was at the White House with President Obama. And she's a Harvard grad, aspiring astronaut. And she was also a survivor of sexual assault. And when she was assaulted, she reached out to a network of her friends and family and professors, um, and she asked for help. She didn't ask for help to tell her story. She asked for help to change the laws and the gaps in her justice system that let her down, that let her down as it related to her police report, that related to her rape kit. She didn't want anyone else to have to do what she had to go through. And she came to Funny or Die, of all places. Um, because she needed the word to get the word out about a bill that she co-wrote with a number of members of Congress. And it's the most proud campaign that I've ever been a part of. Um, Amanda is a force to be reckoned with, but it starts with one thing, and it starts with her bravery. And she was 24 years old when she did this. And so when we think about our campaigns and the millions of people that we need to reach, just know that this brave 24-year-old helped change the world for millions of sexual assault survivors. And so I'm gonna show a short little video because every time I see this video, I get fired up and I wanna like run through a wall. <laughs> and so I hope it does the same for you guys. Our next honoree knows what it's like to fight for women's rights. Tonight, she's being recognized for her role in activism. This Harvard graduate and aspiring astronaut is like countless women, a survivor of sexual assault. Instead of walking away a victim, she walked straight to Capitol Hill, working tirelessly with members of Congress to create the Survivor's Bill of Rights that Obama recently signed into law. She is Amanda Nguyen, and she has empowered millions of women to rise up with her. I'm a survivor.
survivor. Uh, I was raped, and when I went to the criminal justice system, it was really broken. In some states, they destroy the evidence that's collected from the crime. I realized I had a choice. I could accept the injustice or rewrite the law. And we have. Amanda originated the idea for a survivor's rights package and urged me to incorporate such language in this bill. Very recently, President Obama signed the civil rights bill that I and my team wrote into law. And so it's now the law of the land. <laughs> the most powerful tool we all have is our voices. And that's why I'm using mine to fight for what I care about. So that's Amanda. I'm so fired up. I'm over my time. Uh, again, I couldn't be prouder to do this campaign with Amanda. We passed the first ever sexual assault survivor bill. We dropped a piece of legislation with a funny or die video. It's never been done before. Um, and it worked. Millions of people watched the video. Hundreds of thousands of people signed a petition for the bill to get passed. And we passed it in an election year where Republicans and Democrats refused to work together. It was truly a bipartisan effort. And so as I close, I just want to thank all of you for the work that you do. You are the true heroes. Just know Will Farrell in his underwear is ready to work for you. Just call me up. There's my email address. There's my Twitter handle. We love to collaborate. And thank you guys so much. <laughs>